Polls for the California recall election close in just four days, and the country's top Democrats are fighting to keep Governor Gavin Newsom in office. President Biden is expected to campaign for the governor early next week. It follows Vice President Kamala Harris's appearance with him in her home state on Wednesday. 24 Republicans are vying to replace him. The field includes John Cox, the former GOP nominee for governor. Newsom defeated him comfortably in 2018 by more than 23 percentage points. And John Cox joins me now from San Diego to discuss the race and his campaign. Good morning to you. Um, California voters didn't pick you to be their governor three years ago. So why do you believe you're the right candidate for the job now? Well, the state's changed a lot, Tanya, since that time. Homelessness has gotten worse. The housing crisis has gotten worse. We now have a, a man-made drought. Uh, government has not done the work to build reservoirs or desalination. And so we have farmers who are starved for water as well as residences. Uh, we don't have enough electricity. We had some issues with electricity a few years ago. Now we have rolling blackouts and flex alerts all over the place. Crime has risen. Um, wildfires. We've had the worst two years of wildfires. And again, you can blame climate change. but. You know, in the business world, I don't get to just blame external factors. I've got to actually do something about them, and this governor really hasn't. As a matter of fact, he's lied about how many acres he's been able to treat and, and, and fix. Uh, so that's, that's a problem. Uh, you know, I ran as a businessman uh, a few years ago when uh, people were predicting that two Democrats would be in the top two, and frankly, that didn't happen. Uh, you know, I made it to the top two, and I was relatively unknown. This time, I'm getting more and more known by voters and people are more comfortable with me. And I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of residual support out there for my candidacy. And I want to ask you about another big challenge facing your state, the coronavirus pandemic. The Los Angeles School District just voted to require vaccines for students 12 and older. Hospitalizations due to the virus have been rising in your state. So what is your plan to tackle COVID and help the overwhelmed health care systems in California? Well, I've been vaccinated. My family's been vaccinated. I think everybody should get vaccinated. But, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't getting vaccinated, Tanya, and that's a problem because people don't trust their elected leaders. And Gavin Newsom is exhibit A in that problem. Uh, he went out to dinner at the French Laundry in violation of his own rules. He gave out no-bid contracts to donors. He raised money from PG&E and others on his wife's charity. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that people aren't getting vaccinated is they just don't trust their political leadership. Uh, uh, I'm planning to make my governorship the most transparent in California history, and we need to return people to the idea that they can trust government. Listen, the coronavirus is going to be endemic. Sadly, it's it's never going to be a, gone from us. It's a coronavirus, just like the common cold. It's a serious one, and we have to deal with it, and we should get vaccinated. And I'm hoping more and more people will. But the idea that we're going to mandate this vaccine when we, when we can't get rid of it, this is not like smallpox or polio. This resides in animals. We're never going to get rid of it. And the idea of mandatory vaccines, I think, is, is over the top. And uh, we certainly want to get people vaccinated. But, uh, you know, government uh, and political leaders are using this to scare people. Mr. Newsom's running ads that say that uh, the replacement candidates are somehow going to kill a bunch of people. To me, that's the last refuge of a scoundrel to scare people to try to retain power. California has got tons of issues and incredible number of crises from homelessness to housing to water to electricity. And, you know, Mr. Newsom's making this all about the pandemic. Uh, certainly the pandemic's an important issue, but we can't let it uh, run our lives as far as that goes. And Mr. Cox, you also brought up the homelessness problem in California. You are proposing yeah. a pathway to place people experiencing this hardship into conservatorships. Can you explain how that would work? A lot of people are only sort of familiar with what Britney Spears is going through when they hear about right. conservatorships. So explain how your plan would work. Well, frankly, you know, Britney Spears didn't require a conservator. She's out performing and making money. But there's a lot of people on the street who are shooting up drugs and who may be mentally ill, maybe schizophrenic. Uh, they may be alcoholics. And these people need help. 
They don't just need a hotel room. That's what Mr. Newsom's been doing, you know. He's been spending literally billions of dollars buying hotel rooms for people. And unfortunately, that housing first model is not going to work probably because people sit in a hotel room, they're not going to get cured of their drug addiction or their alcoholism. We need to get people in counseling and we may need to force them to do that. But listen, the rest of us want to use the public parks and the beaches and the sidewalks. And we don't want to have them obstructed or, or fouled by people who are living there. And that's just not tenable. Uh, we've got to deal with this problem in government and the political leadership is just impotent on this thing. We've got to get this problem fixed. It's gotten worse and worse and worse, Tanya, and people are fed up with it. And it shouldn't be the case. We should be a compassionate society. I mean, if my own children were on the street shooting up drugs and alcoholic, I wouldn't give them more drugs or more alcohol. I'd get them treatment. And, I, and frankly, I'd, I'd force them to do that treatment if I needed to. I certainly didn't want, wouldn't want to. But you just can't ignore this so problem would you make, and just hope it goes away. Would you make the state the conservator of these people? Or I, I'm, not quite, no. I'm not quite clear on, on no. how they would enter conservatorships. No. No, the state wasn't the conservator for Britney Spears. Uh, they were a private party and they were supervised by the courts. You know, listen, we need to make sure this process is done well. Uh, and so we need to make sure that courts are uh, active on this process, that, that there's oversight and that there's transparency. And maybe that was missing in the Britney Spears uh, example. But, you know, the answer to bad management is not to just eliminate the program. The answer is to get better management. And frankly, that's the issue throughout every issue of California. Uh, we've, we've just got had, just had bad management just down the line on housing, on, on spending, on education. We spend $90 billion a year on education, Tanya. 35 billion of that ends up in administration and our schools are some of the worst in the country. The answer isn't to shut down the schools. The answer is to make them better. The answer is to get the better management. That's the argument I'm making in this recall. Gavin Newsom is just a bad manager. He's a politician. He's, he's only interested in more power and more political prestige so he can become president. We need to manage the state better. We need to fix these problems. That's the argument I'm making entirely. And what he's doing is he's going around with all these political leaders like Biden and Harris and Obama, and he's saying, gee, elect me because uh, the other guys are going to kill you. But he's not addressing the real management problems that the state's going through and that have to get fixed because people deserve a better quality of life here. John Cox, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your perspective. Thank you. A pleasure to be with and, you. And we do want to note that CBSN has also reached out to Governor Newsom, as well as Republican candidates Caitlyn Jenner, Kevin Falconer, and Larry Elder, but we have not heard back. You can watch my interview with other GOP contender Kevin Kiley on CBSNews.com.